Hi, welcome to uh, Sprint Jewels. Okay, so we're going to look at the Majorette. The technical model behind this is working on stride, exaggerated stride length, and the idea is to um, get the feet landing underneath the hip, uh, minimal contact time on the ground, uh, pushing along, striding out, so it's stride length and uh, placement of the foot with a good upright posture. So what I'm going to do first of all is have a look at myself doing it, or you're going to have a look at myself doing it, and let's see how I compare to the technical model. Fine, go. Okay, so slowing the movement down. Let's see uh, how I compare to an ideal technical model. We can see I'm getting extension uh, when I'm striding out, but then I, I don't maintain that extension very well, um, which is due to probably lack of uh, flexibility in my hamstring and the glute. The right leg is not really landed underneath the hip. The left leg is more, so the difference between the two legs. And notably, you see my, a lot of compensation there with flexing the hip and the lumbar uh, back to compensate for lack of mobility. So um, how could this particular running drill uh, correspond to other sporting movements or be useful to other sporting movements? Well, just put a few key points here which, which challenge me. Um, so challenges mobility, in this instance lack of capacity to maintain hip extension. Um, so if I was running uh, in a, say a team sport and then going for a catch, but my posture is very um, uh, flexed here at the hip, it's not an ideal posture to receive the ball maybe. Um, if we think about the unilateral movement of the legs with triple extension, um, it, it, um, it identifies uh, imbalances. So for myself, um, I seem to be more efficient on the left leg, landing underneath the hip, um, rather than the right leg, wasn't landing underneath the, underneath the hip, a bit of a timing issue. Triple extension, not too bad. And then coordination, particularly with the arms, this movement, as it's a, a slow down running movement, which is uh, for, for multiple sports, uh, combat sports, um, again, um, speed of arm movement in catching, um, it, it would carry over very well. Um, so, yeah, pretty challenging drill, and you can see how it corresponds well to, to the various sports. Um, so, what I now do is uh, put this. Um, um, drill to my athlete, jiu-jitsu athlete, which is a, a very challenging as the demand of jiu-jitsu do not really uh, require much running. Uh, it's very much a, a lateral shuffling movement, um, so we'll see how, how my athlete does. Just do one more going back, Mike. Just push high with the foot on the ground, the foot on the ground, ball the thick, ball the foot on the ground. Leg higher, leg higher, bounce, 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 minimal contact. Okay, so analysis of my athlete's movement well. Uh, lack of coordination in the arms in relation to what the movement requires. So the arms are kind of just flying up in the air. Um, the foot is landing underneath the hip. Um, but we see going through the movement that it goes into a triple extension on each side but then jumps instead rather than achieving that whole full hip extension. Um, how could that be uh, important for jiu-jitsu? Well, you know, there's a shuffling movement before the athletes um, uh, fight each other and uh, go to take down to the floor. So that's going to require, um, you know, power, uh, um, not just from, from both legs, but individual legs as the athletes collide. So potentially this uh, particular running drill could identify uh, weaker left or right legs, okay, or power or even impulse each side of the body, which can make a significant difference with who gets taken down first. Um, so, yeah, an interesting drill, uh, but Maffley did find it very, very hard as he's very much out of his uh, skill set with the type of movement they do in um, a jiu-jitsu bout. Okay, so just a few ideas to improve on this. Um, have a uh, focus on um, unilateral bounds. Um, so emphasizing impulse and speed and ground reaction, subsequent ground reaction forces from the left and right legs. And then from the upper body point of view, 
uh, for this athlete. You know, it's very um, unrelaxed in the upper body. So um, to just emphasise, as you know, I'm not a running coach, but uh, a natural um, arm gait movement and uh, um, you know a natural flow of rhythm while doing the drill.